but I will say hello. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Henrietta. And there's Linda. It's great to see everybody. Okay, so let's just get ourselves into class. And we'll just take a minute or two just to get everyone settled. So, you know, go ahead. It's, it's, it's only nine in the morning where I am right yeah. now. I'm not sure where you are. Um, but go ahead and get your water, get your um, tea or coffee, just get yourself all nice and comfortable. Um, I have a little treat for you at the end of the class. I'm going to send it to you in the email. So you can take notes if you would like, but most um, the recipes, for example, you will you will get that at the end. So uh, you don't have to to take notes on that if you don't want to. All right, so I'm going to just start and let me just see. There's still people coming in, but let me just start the record button just so that I don't forget. That's one of those things. All right, so welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Yeah, and I love it when I can see you all. I can see Carter. I think your name might be Carter. Yeah, he's all organized. He's got his headset. He's, he's ready to go, ready, ready to rock and roll. There's Henrietta, I can see her. Can you hear me today, Henrietta? Yeah, I know you had some hear, uh, sound problems at one point. Okay, so let's just go like this. Let's start by sharing my screen. Okay, just to say we're eating lunch, so after lunch we'll put on our camera. Oh, no problem at all, no problem at all, that's great. I just like to I just like to get to know the learners better. That's how I I mean I can sort of remember names, but if it's just like a black box with a name, it's harder for me to um, to remember. But I'm getting better. I see a lot of uh, new faces. I see a lot of faces I've seen before, so that's really great. Okay, so let me get the screen set up here. So let's make sure first of all we're all in the right spot. So this is today's going to be on seven healing foods and seven simple recipes. We got a lot of excite, exciting things to learn today. So um, welcome to class. Um, as you saw, I did sit, hit, hit the record button. So we do record these sessions. And sometimes we live stream these sessions. So has anybody noticed on the new website, on the left-hand side, there's buttons and it, there's a button that looks like a TV icon. You can actually kind of um, get into our Get Set Up TV. And we live stream certain classes every day. Today, we happen to have this one being live streamed. What does that actually mean? Well, what that means is if you had, if you had, yeah, I'm gonna explain. If you hadn't registered for the class like you all have, and you're not sure, hmm, I wonder what Ravina's going to talk about in this class, you can live stream. So you click on the TV icon and you can actually kind of come into the class and listen in and see what's going on. So hello to all of you that are live streaming. I can't see who you are, but uh, maybe next time you can register for the class and then you will have access to the lovely gift I give out at the end. So the gift is the, the recipes and I've created it in this beautiful booklet with the seven recipes as a PDF. So you can um, print it, you can see it on your computer screen or on your phone. And it will be the recipes that go with the seven healing foods. So today we do have, let me check here because I've got, we have Michael. Michael is our support person. So if you have any technical issues and stuff that you, or something that you want to um, uh, help with, uh, he's your guy. He'll also be kind of monitoring the questions in the chat. So if I miss something, he might just, uh, uh, you know, cue me and let me know, oh, so-and-so's got a question. So let's move on here. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ravina. I'm one of the uh, get set up guides. I've been, I've been, let's see, I've been teaching now for a couple months, I think. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm getting some good experience uh, meeting all of you and uh, learning how to do classes with lots and lots of people in the class. Uh, my background is uh, actually, I'm a, a nurse. I have a, a nursing degree and a functional nutrition background, and I've always been interested in healing and health and prevention mostly because as a nurse I saw lots of people sick and injured in the hospital and I thought what can we do to to prevent us from 
even getting sick or coming to the hospital. So that became my mandate. And um, that's why I studied the nutrition. I studied anything that I feel we can do to help keep our bodies in, in prime shape so that we can avoid some of these things that come up possibly in life. So that's a little bit about me. And the last thing to tell you is I live in Canada. So that's neat about how we can live stream and how we can do classes over Zoom. We can live anywhere. So I'm assuming most of you are from the United States. I am in Canada, just up from Seattle. So if you know where Seattle is located and you go north about two hours, you, you get to the border for Canada. I'm actually in Victoria, BC, which is the island, which is quite beautiful, very close to Vancouver. So if you've heard of Vancouver, then yeah. you kind of know where I'm from. Yeah. So, so what I, I always encourage people to put their cameras on even for a couple minutes. If you don't want to have it on the whole time, that's okay. But we learn from each other. And I love to hear stories uh, from each other. We have a, a, um, um, a certain amount of time to get through the material. But certainly if you've got a succinct, like a story that you can share that, that uh, has meaning in the, in the place of the uh, session, please um, feel free to take yourself off of mute and speak and then when you're not speaking just just if you can put yourself back on mute and that just keeps all that background noise out of the way we are recording you can ask for a recording at the end of the session help at getsetup.io uh, i mentioned the live stream already and also just a reminder we don't get paid for any products or services that we talk about today all right so i love this class this is probably my favorite class to teach I have another class that's starting next week. Just a reminder to all of you, it's called Natural Remedies. So if you love this class about healing foods, next week, I believe it's on Thursday, is the first of Natural Remedies. And the neat thing about that is we are going to talk about seven common ailments for older adults that can come up um, and what, what natural remedies can we use to help those ailments so i'll give you a hint like one of them is high blood pressure so if you've got high blood pressure what's something naturally we can do to bring that pressure down so that's coming up uh next week natural remedies hi carolyn nice to see you so uh, you know i don't mean to butt in this is peggy sure. i'm very sorry but i am having major issues with my phone as well as my ipad which i'm on so if okay. i all of a sudden blank out it's not because of you or the class it's because of my equipment okay no worries we have michael just, michael's in the chat if you want well, to send no, him a it's, message it's all me i don't want okay to, i don't want to involve him but okay i'm just telling you it's my problem and you know so that's it no worries no worries <laughs> peggy um you know what Let, let's face it we did any of us even know what zoom was like over a year ago i i honestly had heard it once so i didn't even know what it was so well i'm not very good i'm horrible with <laughs> technology so I'm well, at a disadvantage. We're all becoming experts in technology, I'm, aren't I'm we? I'm at a disadvantage. I'm at a disadvantage on every device. All right. Well, hang in there. Hopefully you get the gist of it. And I will remember your name. Make sure you get the email with the with the recipes that I'm going to email yes, please, to you. Please do. Please yeah. do. Okay. So what are we going to learn today? What we're going to understand the healing power of food when there's some really amazing healing powers in food. We're gonna learn about seven healing foods that I chose myself. So these are probably sort of my favorites, uh, but you know, there's many healing foods out there. But I chose the ones that I think are really important for vibrant living and especially as we are aging. And we all are aging, let's face it, doesn't matter what age we are, we all are getting that extra, you know, one year older, one year older, but more so for the sort of the 50 year old and up. Um, is kind of what I'm focusing on. And then we're going to talk about the simple recipes that I've put together. And when I say simple, they're pretty simple. So if you're not a cook or a chef, not to worry. I've got really good instructions and you should, well, I'm going to say most people will have um, not a problem doing these recipes. All right. So I want to ask you guys a question. So we're here about healing foods. Has anybody ever used a food in the past, so maybe when you were a child, maybe your mom did, maybe your grandmother did, did you ever use a food to help a body ailment or a symptom that you might have been having? Can anybody, chicken, does anybody? Chicken, chicken soup. Yeah? Chicken soup. 
Yeah, that's a good one. I, I remember that if I wasn't feeling good, that was something that um, my mom would make for us a uh, chicken soup. Um, Carolyn, what would you have something? Yeah, my father used to chop up onions when I was little. And if I had a fever, he'd put them on my stomach. I'd never heard anybody putting it on the stomach before, but it would get rid of the fever. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've heard, I've heard about onions. I mean, onions are actually very, very healthy. Um, but uh, putting it like a, what do they call it? A capultist or something like something like on, on yeah. your stomach. I, mm-hmm. I think in the olden days, and I'll say olden days, what does that mean? Like way long ago, they used to do a lot of those kinds of things and herbs and plants and, and put it in powders or putting it into like a something and, and place it right on our skin. Now, remember it just like, um, just sort of off topic, but on topic, our skin is our largest organ. If you think about it that way. And we actually, um, uh, for example, if you're having leg cramps, magnesium, you might be low in magnesium, but instead of just ingesting magnesium capsules, if your doctor is supporting you to do that, you can also get like magnesium salts and have a salt bath in magnesium because our skin is amazing at bringing in um, some of these amazing minerals. So there's just an example. Does I have another one. Else? Yes, sure. I have another one. I'm butting in. But That's okay. I had a horrible case of poison ivy. Horrible. Mm. And mm-hmm. it was, and I think maybe it was misdiagnosed that it was poison oak because it acted like poison ivy. It started on my face, it completely covered my whole body. Mm. It did not seep. It was just inflammation. Everything was out of proportion. Uh, and it itched so terrible. Uh, that was what was the worst part, the itching. And I have since found out, and I found out it works for itching, immediately put vinegar on it. Oh, okay. Wow. That, that and, would... and that works for me. Now you wow. might have to keep doing it, but for me, apple cider vinegar works. Wow. Okay, great. I mean, I, mean, apple I cider would have vinegar... been doing it all day. I would have been doing no. it all day. Right. Well, good. Thank you for sharing. So, um, so Peggy's like apple cider vinegar is one of those things. Uh, there's a lot of kitchen hacks with apple cider vinegar, not one of the ones I chose for today, but it's nice to hear. I like to hear stories from people about what they've done. Okay. So let's move on. So let's just talk about the healing power of food. Why is that? So natural nutrient dense foods are known to protect against and mitigate and sometimes cure many chronic diseases. I mean, there's research out there that shows that also slows down the effect of aging and helps to promote that longevity. So give you a long life. Now, in a class prior, somebody said, well, okay, nutrient dense, I kind of think I know what that means. But what what does that mean? Exactly? Can anybody explain what a nutrient dense food is? Is That's something that you've heard of? Probably heard it. Yeah, no. Okay. So nutrient dense foods, you think of a nutrient dense food as um, um, full of nutrients that the ratio between the calories that it is versus the amount of vitamins and minerals in it, there's, it's, it's dense. There, there's a lot. So you have, a a surplus almost of vitamins and minerals in that food. So for example, a banana, um, most fruits, like, or I would say like all fruits have so many vitamins and minerals in them that, that it outshines the, the calories that you are taking into your body. Now, on the other hand, uh, let's use the, I always use the bag of chips thing. Cause that's something that's a bit of a weakness for me. If you eat a bag of chips, if you look at the the ingredients and you look at what's in it, there really are probably not any vitamins or minerals or very minimal if you get like root vegetable chips. So the the calorie amount that you are taking in versus the minerals and vitamins is not that dense. So that wouldn't be considered a nutrient dense food. Um, What I want to suggest to you as well is whatever you put into your mouth, doesn't matter what it is. So, you know, it could be a beautiful carrot or it could be a piece of candy. Okay. One's got lots of vitamins and minerals. The other one probably has none, like zero. 
or very, very little. But when you put that candy in your mouth, your body still has to process it. So like, say it's liquor. I'm just going to use an example of licorice. So you're chomping on some licorice. There's no vitamins and minerals in it, but your body still has to process it, digest it, process it, eliminate it, all the stuff that body systems it has to do. And for your body to do those body uh, systems movement, it needs vitamins and minerals. So what does your body do? What do you think it does? It has to get those vitamins and minerals somewhere to do that process. So what it does is it goes and takes the minerals and vitamins in your surplus. And hopefully you've got a surplus in your body to break down that food. That's maybe not even considered a food. So when you eat nutrient dense foods, guess what? You're, you're building up your stores. You got your vitamins and minerals in, in at bay for when you need it for those moments, when you say you eat something that's not very nutritious. So that just gives you an example of the nutrient dense. Now, moving to the next slide, the other reason why nutrient dense foods are so good because they have the ability to decrease your inflammation in your body. Most of us, I'm going to say most of us have some form of inflammation in our body. How does that show up when we, when it gets a little bit out of hand, what do we get swelling ankles? Do we get bloating on our stomach? Do we just, we feel a little bit ill or we feel like something's not right we don't know really what's going on inside our bodies because we don't you have catch like, a cold. Do you catch a cold? Um, yeah. I mean, and any inflammation inside your body is usually can start um, where certain cells and certain genes will express themselves. So if you've got like say diabetes in your, in your family and you got the genes for it, they're just sitting dormant, but now you've got more and more inflammation in our bodies that can be the start of that disease manifesting. So we want to keep inflammation down in our bodies. Does anybody know what the blood test is that you get to, to check about your inflammation levels in your body? Has anybody seen that on blood work before? No. So it's do, they also, is, do they also think this can cause cancer? Well, inflammation's not good. I mean, if you've got inflammation on the outside of your body, you know, that's not good. If you've got knee pain and your knee is inflamed because of some workout you did, your knee can't heal when it's inflamed because it's got redness, it's inflamed, it's irritated. So, um, you know, I'm not a doctor. I, I'm a nurse, but I'm not a doctor. So I think any disease can be manifested from too much inflammation. And so your body cancer, hasn't, also cancer. Your body hasn't had a chance to heal. So I think there is a relation to everything, including cancer, when your body is inflamed. So I want to say that with the blood work that you get done, there is this test called C, like the, the, the capital C dash reactive protein c reactive protein is the test now when you do get your blood work done next if you want to check what your inflammation level is try um, asking your doctor to test that now another way to know if you got inflammation in your body what's the other one it's usually our our um our white blood cell count is higher so when you get blood work and it shows hmm, the doctor will say yeah your your blood your white blood cell count is a little high that could be because it's fighting an infection again. So it could be because of inflammation. All right, let's move on. So there are doctors more than the two I have listed up on the screen that are very adamant about nutrition being the center of healthcare. Like Dr. Mark Hyman, who you may have heard of, he's been on TV with Dr. Oz. He's, he's written books. He, he works, he does a lot lot of stuff in the media because he's trying to get his message out there and his message is I want nutrition to be the center primary part of healthcare. Dr. Axe also feels like what you put in your grocery cart has a huge impact on your health. So again, they're really relating what we eat and put into our mouth has a direct relation to um, our overall health. Something to keep in mind. So today I've chosen seven um, of my top favorite healing foods. And they're very, I, I chose these foods purposely because I wanted, um, 
that to be foods that I feel that most of us have access to easy, easy access to. So you're going to be surprised maybe by some of them, but I feel like most of these things are in your typical grocery store. Uh, you might have to go to a specialty store maybe for one of them, but I mean, more places are, are carrying more interesting products. Like you notice now in our grocery store, there's a Latin American section, there's an Asian section, there's an Indian, you know, there's diff different sections, even in like places like Walmart, you go into the grocery section, you can go down the aisle and find all there's a Japanese section with Japanese um, style foods like miso, for example. So we're getting more accessibility to different types of foods in North America, in Canada and in the United States. Unless you live in a really teeny tiny small town, you might not be able to get that particular product. So let's get started. So my first healing food for all of us are apples. And what do they say about apples? We hear it all the time or we've heard it in the past. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. It's a nice rhyme, but there is some real truth to that. Now, the reason are the reason is because apples have amazing properties. First of all, they're accessible to most of us. There's a variety of apples out there. Like we 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 have all sorts of different apples and Really, the differences in apples, probably the sweetness level. So some have more sugars in them than others. All apples have natural sugars in them, the fructose. Are there certain apples that are supposed to be the best? Well, I think it's about it's about um, what you like. Like, uh, I mean, some people like love green apples. I love the green Granny Smith apples, the tart ones. I Because I grew up with a, a green apple tree outside my bedroom window. I mean, I used to, you know, pick apples from my window. I, I grew up with the, those. If, you, if you've only grown up with Braeburn apples, for instance, that are a bit sweeter, you might hate the green apples. But no, I think apples in general have, um, they're all high in amounts of pectin. Pectin is that really, really good fiber you get all this beautiful uh, soluble fiber that you ingest and it helps to clean the pipes as the fiber is moving through your system. It's very, very good for heart health. I know a gentleman now in his nineties and he does not go out, out, go through a day without eating an apple. So he eats that apple a day and guess what? He doesn't go to the doctor very often. He lives on a farm. Um, so he probably has some other good best practices that he, that he does, but he eats an apple every single day. Um, what else can I say about apples? Apples are pretty pleasurable. Like most people will like apples. Like when you're a child, you, you get used to eating an apple. And if you really pay attention, when you eat an apple and you chew it nicely, there's a lot of beautiful sweetness in it. You don't need to add sugar. Um, you don't you need to eat a sweet, um, a sweet uh, dessert or something. If you're feeling like craving a little bit of sweetness, you could just, you know, cut up an apple and eat it and, and get that satisfaction. So that's our first one. I won't tell you what the recipe is till the end, but that's the first one. The next food is ginger. Now I'm going to admit that when I was young, I did not like ginger. I found it too strong in my mouth. It was like it, it, I didn't like to bite into ginger. My mom used to cook with ginger, not tons, but she would put slivers of it into like a stir fry or a something like that, or a curry. And uh, I just didn't like the, the full potent taste of ginger when I bit into it. But now as an adult, I've realized ginger out of, I, out of the seven foods, ginger is my number two in terms of how healing it is. There is what they call compounds in ginger that's easy to remember because it's the name is gingerols. Sounds almost fake, but that's the name of the compound. The best thing about ginger is that it has a preventative purpose. So for any of you who um, say you're going to go on a, a long bus ride, maybe you're going to be traveling, maybe you're going to be in the car, on a, on a boat, on a cruise ship, maybe one day when the cruises start again, anything where you might feel like you might get a bit queasy or nauseous, preventatively, you can take ginger in, in, a, in whatever form you want to take it. The ginger, the compounds in ginger go into the, into your digestive tract and they go into these little receptors. They, they take the place in these little receptors and get rid of the nausea you might, might have been feeling. And so it's very, very good preventatively. Ginger looks just like the picture there. It's sort of had, it's a root and it's that lovely color inside. Um, 
ginger can last quite a long time. So if you put ginger, uh, if you buy ginger, it can sit in your like in your little bowl with with onions. Mac, you've got a question. Yes, I was wondering. You can eat that raw. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I mean, if you can tolerate raw ginger, sure. People will grate it and put it in um, in things. I would prefer ginger to have at least a little bit of a movement in something like if you're going to like in a stir fry where it's cooked a tiny bit. Um, I would say I would grate it. People put uh, ground powdered ginger in foods as well. But um, like, for example, the next food we're going to talk about, sure, I think you can do that one raw. It might not be I mean, if you can tolerate it, yes. And people, there's all sorts of ways of ginger. They candy ginger. I'm not a big fan of candy ginger because of the processed refined sugar that right. they put with it. I just don't think that's necessary. But, yes. but ginger, you. you're welcome. Ginger has been around for e e eons. Like the Asian population has been using it for digestive um, health and for the nausea. And here today in modern science, we are all about it. We all agree wholeheartedly with the Asian cultures with using ginger. A lot of people use it for arthritis relief. I don't myself have a lot of arthritis. I think I have a little bit maybe in my knee from an from after an accident, but they also say there's some cancer protective um, things with ginger. So I'm gonna give you just a little tip on it. If you're not keen on ginger and you'd like to start trying it and you don't want it to go bad, because even as a root, that root can start to go moldy or bad if it sits out for too long. So my suggestion to you is get it in a freezer Ziploc bag, like buy your piece of ginger, stick it in your freezer. And when you're going to cook and you, and you say, oh, I think I'll like a little bit of ginger, pull it out, wait a couple minutes and then cut off a little piece of it. And then that way we'll keep fresher for you, but don't leave it in the freezer for like more than three months. Like I'm just saying, if you buy one, one piece of ginger, you could use it over the three month period and just take it out when you need it as opposed and to how would you, how would you eat the ginger? What do you do to eat it? What do you, you can use, what do you put on it? You can use your ginger in many ways. Um, most common ways would be to chop it up and put it in your soups. You're getting mm -hmm. the benefit of the ginger from, uh, from a soup, like an Asian soup or just any soup you can put it in. My favorite way to use ginger is in a stir fry. So I do my onions and garlic and then I put a little bit of ginger. You can also use it in curries. Um, what about any, a salad? salad? Um, I wouldn't necessarily put ginger in a salad. I think that would be too strong. Um, oh. You could, you could, you could grate it and put it in a salad dressing possibly. So it kind of gets marinated a little bit with the balsamic vinegar or whatever's in your salad dressing. Um, and then I want to show you one other little tip. So I always forget to bring it in, in a, an actual real piece of ginger, but say this is the leg of the ginger. So instead of trying to peel it because it's so bumpy and using a regular potato peeler, take the take a, 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 a teaspoon and turn the teaspoon over like the back of the teaspoon. And then you just go with the back of the teaspoon and you, you kind of scrape the ginger, just like I'm doing. And that will take off that sort of hardened skin. Some people just chop their ginger and leave the skin on. And you know, if they're eating their, their their curry or whatever they just take the if they can't chew it they take the skin off but that's a nice way of like cleaning off the skin on the on the ginger at, and without wasting half of the the piece of ginger because it if you use a grater it can sorry a potato peeler it can take more of it off all right Mac did you have another question or that's probably still your hand from before no worries if it is um yes you have to physically lower your hand on the, the reactions, but I do love the reactions. So if you have reactions and you want to say something like, you know, you agree, you can do a thumbs up or, you know, or a clap or whatever uh, during the class. All right. The third one is garlic. This is one of my top favorites because I love the smell of garlic. I love when garlic is, is baking in the oven. Oh, it's so good. The compound in garlic is called allicin. And this one releases um, and is in, is released and you can benefit from crushing up the raw garlic. So Mac was asking about the raw ginger. Garlic is one of those that I think we can tolerate a little bit better when it's raw. So if you crush it, you can put it in a salsa, for instance, if you're making like a salsa. Uh, it's 
the benefits of, of garlic, I'm going to say, is probably pretty much the same, whether it is raw or if it's cooked. And uh, garlic is one of those things we use for cleaning out or keeping ourselves safe from like the viruses, the bacteria, the, um, the microbes, and also inflammation. So it's also a really good anti-inflammatory. All seven foods that I'm giving you today are anti-inflammatory, help to bring down inflammation in your body. That's the, the main thing about their, in, their, um, their healing benefits. But garlic, do you remember back in the day, if you had a cold or you had an infection, they would sometimes make a little thing of garlic and put that on your chest or have you ingest garlic in a, say, a soup. So garlic, the recipe I have is kind of a fun one. So um, stay tuned for the end of the class for that. But I'm hoping there's nobody here that doesn't like garlic. You maybe got too big of a dose of garlic. There are several different types of garlic. So um, we get this beautiful Russian garlic that comes up here. They're big, big bulbs and they're sort of purpley color. And the, the flavor of that garlic is just out of this world. It's so good. So what else can I say about garlic? Uh, it is so good for heart health. It's, it, they have suggested through research that it has been used as part of cancer treatment and prevention. Again, I'm bringing stuff out of the research. Um, I don't know, things are continuing to be um, uh, studied, but these healing foods, they're finding some really amazing results from some of these healing foods. The other thing it does- can you, can, Is it all right to use the, um, the powdered form? you know, that, that you buy as a, as a spice? Um, for, in, for garlic, I would say, try to use it fresh. The well, garlic I don't care for it fresh. I use it. I never use it fresh. I always use it as garlic powder or garlic salt. Yeah. I would say, I mean, yeah, you, it comes in garlic forms of garlic salt and garlic powder. Yeah. I use it when I'm like, if I'm baking, I made something that was a bit savory. Um, like a like a scone or something you can put a little bit of garlic powder in there that would probably be the better form to use if you're baking or or and if so you would don't you get really any, would you get from that kind of garlic would you get any nutritional benefit you are getting some benefit but nowhere near as you would with fresh okay so in so as i was saying you 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 get um, for treating colds and infections. That used to be kind of the thing back in the day. We would we would see garlic being used for treatment of colds and infections. So the fourth food I want to talk about are blueberries, and blueberries are a beautiful, natural, gorgeous fruit that we have been given that is packed full of antioxidants. Your brain loves blueberries, for example. If you've taken my Optimal Brain class, we talk about blueberries being a top food for the brain. My mentor who studies everything to do with the brain, Jim Quick, he calls them brain berries. So that's a kind of a fun way to remember um, what they're called, brain berries. So um, they, what blueberries do, it has the ability to go into your system and get rid of those free radicals that can be produced when things oxidize in your in our systems. Free radicals are not great, so you want to you want to get rid of those. So blueberries have this ability to do that. Um, blueberries also can help to lower blood pressure naturally. So that's another thing. So in essence, blueberries are good for heart disease or heart health. Good for promoting heart health. So I've got a fun recipe for blueberries. Most of us, when we eat blueberries, usually get a little carton from the grocery store and they're just, they're, they're easy just to eat raw. You can cook with blueberries. The recipe I'm gonna show you is an interesting one, very easy to do. Uh, but uh, I just love the color of blueberries. You know, when I say eat the rainbow, if you've been in any of my other classes, I say, try to eat the rainbow. This is, here's one of your blue foods, blue purpley foods. All right, the next healing food I chose is one of my favorites and has become one of my husband's favorites now. Now, just a, a little history. My husband is from cow country. Like he's from Alberta, the province of Alberta, which is beside British Columbia where we live now. And he wasn't, he didn't grow up eating fish. Like, ooh, he didn't know anything about fish. He didn't want to eat fish. It was not something that he loved. But 
salmon, salmon is one of the most healing foods you can eat. Be if you are not vegan or vegetarian, because it's packed full of omega-3 fatty acids, which you guys have heard me rant about a lot about omega-3s. We need our omega-3s. Most of us are low in omega-3s because why? Do you know why we're low in omega-3s? Anybody? Because our body does not manufacture omega-3s. Like our body can manufacture vitamin D, say for example, if we go in the sunshine but our body has no ability to manufacture omega-3 fatty acids and they are imperative for life for us to be living and our systems to be running. We need omega-3 fatty acids. So it's, it's an essential, that's why they call it essential, meaning you need it. You have to have it. So we got to get it from our foods. So um, that's why salmon is such an amazing healing food. It's also very anti-inflammatory when you eat salmon, salmon helps to bring down inflammation. So if you've got swelling knees or you've got um, issues, uh, the, the anti-inflammatory effects just in itself are really important. Mom, you've got a question. I got your name as mom. <laughs> I don't I can't get rid of that. Every time I come, I think my, my daughter must have said it. And yeah, it's, that's okay. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. uh, I know I would like to have more salmon, but the problem is it has such a strong uh, fishy uh, mm -hmm. flavor even cooking it I have problem do you have a suggestion or is there a, a way <laughs> to lower or or uh, cover up that okay yeah absolutely it's a great question great question and just so you know uh, Michael can help you change your name on that thing in your square there's those three dots but he can he'll go he can go in the chat to you and help you change your name if you'd like to learn how to do that. So I can tell yeah, you- I can do that for her. What is her That's great, thank, thank you so much. Michael will help you, he's our support guy. So here's the answer to that. that, Yeah. okay? First of all, your fish should not smell, smell fishy. Like when you get fresh fish, it does not have a stinky, stinky, fishy smell. That might be a sign that things are a little bit old. So that keep that in mind. That's the first tip that a fisher, a fishmonger would tell you. Like it shouldn't, you're, you shouldn't be, it shouldn't just reek of yucky, oh, stinky fish. So that's your first thing. The second thing is um, with fish, if like, so my mother-in-law is like this too. She does not like the, the, the smell of it, but once it's cooked, she may try it. She may try it. She's still on the fence with the fish thing. Salmon, you can overcook it pretty quick too. You don't want to overcook it. That's one of the reasons people don't like salmon is because they overcook it and now it's dry and it doesn't, it doesn't have any flavor. So you don't want to overcook your fish. But number one thing I'm going to say is if it's too fishy for you, it might be not the freshest fish. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I have a really great recipe for you, whatever your name is. I'll just call you mom for now. Oh, yeah. I have this, the great recipe that I'm going to give you is a really great, um, beautiful marinade with this salmon that will kind of take away some of the fishiness, if, if I can say that. Oh, so great. I'd love, I'd love you to try the recipe. So we'll get to that. We got time to get to it. So let's just go through our foods here so we can get to the uh, recipes. So again, with the salmon, it is packed full of protein. Obviously it's a, it's a protein. It's got the B12s, the B6s, the vitamin D, the selenium, which is a, a mineral. And I'm going to suggest that you try to eat salmon if you can once a week for those omega threes and wild caught salmon. You can get in the can. You can get it at Costco. I've seen it at Costco. I've seen it at Walmart. I've seen it at any grocery store. Wild caught uh, sockeye salmon is that reddest salmon. Is pink salmon good? Absolutely. Pink salmon is, is good. Is it as good in terms of those nutrients as the the red salmon, maybe not, but it's still very good. So if you can only get canned salmon, great. Make salmon patties. Um, you can make a, a salmon potato curry with a canned salmon. I don't have that recipe this time around, but maybe next time. Now, one last thing. What if you are vegetarian or vegan and you don't eat fish? How am I getting my omega-3s? Can anybody give me an example of omega-3s that is vegetarian? Anybody have a, an example? No? Flax seeds. Flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts. 
um, those would be, um, I would say the seeds, the nuts and seeds is where you're going to get the omega threes. If you don't eat fish, if you're vegan or you're, you're, um, vegetarian. All right. The sixth healing food avocados. I hope we all love avocados. Avocado is actually a fruit. Did you know that it's one of those rare fruits that is not sweet. It is more with healthy fat. So it's got the mono unsaturated, beautiful fats that our body loves, especially our brain. Our brain loves avocados. So if you can get an avocado, um, if you can buy avocados and they're not super expensive, bring it into your, into your regime, your cooking regime. You can eat it raw, you know, you cut it and it's this be beautiful, smooth, um, you can be like all the millennials and smash it on toast. That's what all the young people do now. Uh, what's another way to eat avocado? One of my favorite, favorite types is putting my chunks of avocado in my hot soup amazing. You eat your vegetable soup or whatever you're eating and that beautiful buttery um, flavor and taste in your mouth when with the avocado. And I learned that from Mexico when I was on a trip in Mexico and in, in the, um, uh, that's what they did. They have lots of avocados. They put it right into their soups. What other are the, some of the other fatty fish varieties? Carter's asking sardines. Does anybody eat sardines? I hope so. Oh, sardines. Yeah. Sardines are actually very um, inexpensive. I mean, they come in all forms now in the grocery store, but you can get them in tomato sauce and this sauce. I mean, just careful, check your, check your ingredients, make sure there's no added sugar. Cause I, that bugs me when they add sugar to everything, but check and see, I learned how to eat sardines as a kid. So I like them. I don't like looking at the little fish sometimes, but you know, you take them out of the can, you chop it up, you add some minced um, onion to it. It's delicious. Another food, um, salmon. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Because they're in a can, wouldn't that make them less healthy? Well, I mean, we're not, I mean, I'm going to talk about this in my detox class for the kitchen that's coming soon. I'm working on it. You have to be careful sometimes in tins. If things sit in tins too long, there's that B BPA and things like that to do with the, the tins. But a lot of them, you can get the healthier ones that they have like a, a like a, not a paper, but they have something that protecting from the tin, but sardines are an amazing, amazing food. And the other one, uh, for you, Carter, salmon, a uh, mackerel tuna. Those are all, um, have the oily, the oily fish that you can get the omega threes from and talk to your doctor about it. But if you're really concerned that you're not getting omega threes, cause say you don't eat fish at all and you don't like flax seeds, omega three can come in some beautiful supplements, but do talk to your doctor about that. All right, let's just move on here. The other thing that's amazing about avocados is the fiber content. It's that beautiful, soluble, amazing fiber your body loves. So if you're having some issues on the other end, like the bathroom side of things, uh, avocados is a great way to keep your system moving. It's that beautiful smoothness that kind of comes into your body. All right, let's get to the last food and then we're going to go to the recipes. All right, turmeric. Who has heard of turmeric? We all heard of turmeric. It's kind of becoming mainstream now a little bit more. It's not necessarily in Asian cultures as much as it is now out there. Marianne, you have a question? Um, I put it in with my um, oatmeal. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. And how is that for you? I love it. I, you don't need a lot but I've gotten used to you doing that. So um, I do like it. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to remember that one. I also remembered another one. Um, okay, so let me just talk about turmeric first. And then I can see like, you, I can give you some examples of where to use it. Now, Marianne's just given us a, that's a great one. I've never thought about putting it in. It probably makes it look a little bit yellowy or but maybe it feels healthy. Yes, it's not as uh, appetizing, but um, to me, it, it tastes good. Okay, excellent. So here's the thing about turmeric for all of you who haven't tried it yet. It's kind of a little bit bitter. It's not like got the best flavor, but out of all seven of the foods I've just given you, 
And for all of you out there um, watching, I want you to know about turmeric. Turmeric is probably the, the one with the most healing powers of all seven foods I've just talked about. So if you're not using turmeric at all in your cooking, I want you to, to, to try and, and try it. It has a compound in it, just like okay, ginger had the ginger alls, garlic had the allicin. Turmeric has a thing called curcumin. Nothing to do with cumin seeds. That's another spice. Curcumin is the compound in, in turmeric. And what is it good for? Oh my gosh, it is like the, I'm going to say the number one healing food for inflammation. If you've got like swell, swollen knees or inflammation, that's just, you know, you've got, you're on medications, say for example, to try and bring down the inflammation, ask your doctor and see if you can have turmeric. They actually make it in pill form as well for people who are really, really trying to maybe get off a of medication or reduce their medication. Often they will talk to their doctor about turmeric pills. There are over 10,000 peer reviewed studies published today talking about the health benefits of turmeric. So I'm gonna be talking about a recipe soon, but I can say, where have I started using turmeric? I put a tiny little bit in my smoothie Marianne has just given us a suggestion to put it in her oat. I love oatmeal in the morning. I'm going to try putting a little bit in there. Not too much, but just a tiny little bit. I put it in everything. Yeah. Um, the Do powder. You? Yeah. And, and it just, it, and I noticed all the major cooks, Martha Stewart and, and uh, on TV, they, they have been using turmeric and cumin. So I thought, hmm. That, that must be something good. So yeah. Well, one of the tricks, here's a chef trick for all of you. You know, when somebody makes scrambled eggs um, and maybe you don't exactly. have those beautiful organic eggs with that really dark yellow yolk. Like to me, I go, oh, healthier egg versus the pale looking egg. Many chefs is a little, not as a trick, but it's good for your health. They'll put a tiny bit of, of this turmeric in with the eggs. And guess what? It just makes it look fresher and, and more orange. If you guys check your boxes now, I'm not I'm not promoting you eat this because I eat it only occasionally. Craft dinner, craft dinner. If you look at the box of craft dinner here in Canada, anyways, guess what they use for coloring now? They do they don't use color number seven, color number you know all that artificial stuff. They actually use a bit of turmeric and a bit of paprika. They won't tell you how what you know what the exact amount they use, but they use paprika and turmeric to color the craft the cheese the powder so that your craft dinner looks more healthy so there's just a tip but here's something i just learned the other day i made deviled eggs does anybody ever make deviled eggs we we call it deviled eggs you know where the hard-boiled eggs and then you do the you do the mixture and you add some mayonnaise and maybe mustard for the coloring i added a little bit of turmeric into my deviled eggs the other day and wow they looked fantastic so so there is something. So Car uh, Carolyn's got in the message here. I just see what you said here. Turmeric has allowed me to go one year without surgery. I'm bone on bone, but I have not, uh, you don't have the pain. Okay. Yes. Thank you for sharing, Carolyn. Do you know, I, I, this is what I mean. Turmeric is so powerful. So just wanted to just say that about turmeric. All right. So let's, I'm going to stop sharing for one second. We'll just take a little check around here and see if everybody's doing okay. All right, I'm going to switch over to the uh, recipes that I have somewhere here. Okay, let me hit the share screen. I'm getting better at this technology stuff, I have to tell you. I wasn't great at it when I first started trying to organize all of you and all the screens. All right, so can everybody see the, the recipe, the blueberry picture? Yeah. So, um, Here's your seven recipes that you're going to get. And it's going to come in an email to you. I'm going to send at the end of the, at the end of the session, seven healing foods, seven simple recipes. The first one was apples. So I have got my chunky applesauce recipe for you. I make my applesauce in my slow cooker or crock pot. If you call it a crock pot, um, it gives you the full recipe here. I, one thing I just want to say about this recipe. I really want you to try making your applesauce next time without sugar, no sugar, zero sugar, zero processed refined sugar. Try it. Just try it once. Just try it once. If you allow the apples to cook slowly, the natural sugars will come out of the apples. Even like a, ch a child will get used to eating the applesauce without tons of sugar in it. 
Um, I mean, you can tell I'm a little bit against sugar because we're, we're all addicted to sugar. Why? Because they put it in all our packaged foods. It's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. One of the things that I do when I make my applesauce is I don't use the exact same apple, the same brand of apple. I, I take a couple different apples. Our grocery stores are full of amazing different apples. So you put all these apples together and you get more of a full, full body taste of your applesauce. So that's a little trick, a little chef trick. And um, I've got it all written here. I, I, the two things I want to take from this, use a variety of apples, don't add added sugar. If you really have to, when it's cooked, add some sugar, fine, but try it this way. Um, Kathy is asking um, in the in the chat about a fruit or spice that helps prevent anxiety or depression. Okay, well, stay tuned for my class next week on natural remedies because I do um, talk about anxiety in that class. It's one of the ailments. So that's coming. All right, so that's the applesauce. The next food was ginger. And I have a beautiful recipe, simple recipe for making ginger tea. So this is a beautiful thing. Drink this tea before you go for that bus ride or that car ride or, you know, something where you think you might, or you're just not feeling good. You ate too much. Maybe you ate too much for dinner. Have a little ginger tea afterwards and you will help with your nausea. So again, there's that beautiful um, ginger root. And this is a, an, an example of how to make it. Now you can decide... <coughs> If you want to put um, if you want to put honey in it, if you're not having a lot of sugar, you don't have to. But lemon and honey kind of go nicely with ginger. It's a nice combination. The next recipe for the garlic, this is an interesting one. I'm I've got a recipe here for garlic mashed potatoes. I'm pretty sure most people like potatoes. You know, mashed potatoes are kind of nice. It reminds me of a steakhouse where they make the fancy garlic mashed potatoes. Well, you can do that at home. So here's a beautiful recipe and I explain what I use, why I use it. And then I also down here, I'm going a little faster, but I show you how to roast garlic. A lot of people don't do this. It's amazing when you roast garlic, how delicious it tastes. You can take your fork and put it right into the, into the, um, into the garlic there and eat the whole lobe. And it doesn't taste, it doesn't taste weird because it's, it's been roasted. And the only thing I'm really putting on this is, is um, olive oil, I believe, but you'll see it in the recipe. All right, the blueberries. Remember I was mentioning about blueberries. We're all so used to eating blueberries like uh, raw, but here's a nice way to, to, it's kind of fresh, but you need one of those Nutribullets, Magic Bullets or a Vitamix or some kind of mixer that can do it quick, like do it at a fast speed. You're taking one cup of fresh blueberries, you're adding in, this is how you make your own salad dressing to, to maybe, I don't know, you're having somebody over for lunch. Um, it's so beautiful because it comes out in that beautiful, gorgeous color. And it's a bit of vinegar, a little bit of the honey, a little bit of lemon juice to taste. So you have to taste it and, and get it exactly how you want to eat it and a little bit of olive oil and it, you blend it all up and you get this beautiful vinaigrette. You can put it on fish like salmon would be good. You could put it um, on chicken. You can also put it um, on your salads. Sylvia, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I was wondering if, well, blueberries are so delicate. They don't last long. No. And I would, if I buy a big bag, I usually end up having to throw away some of them. Um, so I have been buying frozen ones. Uh, now, my question is, I used to have uh, two blueberry uh, uh, bushes in Connecticut, and I didn't realize that, but they were thumb size, and I haven't been able to buy any blueberries that were thumb size. Okay. I've never seen any. I, I wish I had relocated those two. <laughs> yeah, well, you, so here's the thing about blueberries, just to talk just real quick about blueberries. There are many types of blueberries. They're the, the early blueberries that come in the early season. And then there's the mid ones and then the um, the late blueberries. I actually have a blueberry bush on my on my balcony and I picked one of the sweeter blueberries. 
Some of them are gigantic. You're right. It's a type of blueberry and not everybody mass produces that one for the grocery store. I would so, love to be able to buy those. Yeah. So I would look for seeds and I would, if wherever you're living, if you can get another, put another pot and, and grow your own blueberries, that would be the best. But mm, never um, get that. <laughs> yeah, but flat uh, frozen blueberries are just as good because if they're flash frozen and, and here's a trick too, if you have blueberries and you're thinking, I'm not going to get through my whole little carton or box, Get, get your cookie sheet, put your parchment paper down, put your blueberries that you're going to freeze yourself into your freezer, freeze them individually first. That's the key. Oh. Then put them in the Ziploc freezer bag and put it or whatever bag and put it in the freezer. Because if you try to freeze them all together, they'll just be like one big block. So freeze them individually and then put it in and, and you're saving them. So don't throw them. You don't have to throw them out. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So this recipe I say here, do I say in my thing, because they're fresh blueberries, um, you know, the dressing's not going to last forever, but you do have the oil and vinegar in there to kind of sort of preserve it a bit. But I wouldn't leave it in the, the, the fridge kind of longer than a week or so. Probably you could get away with two weeks, but it'll be so delicious. You're not going to, it's not going to sit in there that long. Okay. So this is for, I think, it, was it Sylvia who was asking me about the fishy fish? It might've been Sylvia. Um, this is the recipe I'm talking about. If for somebody who's not a big fish eater, try this recipe and I think they might like it. So you can see there's a bit of maple syrup, there's a little bit of orange juice, there's a little bit of soy sauce, there's that beautiful garlic, minced garlic in there. This makes your fish taste amazing and it, there will not be any fishy taste when you eat this salmon, believe me. So you got this beautiful recipe here. You can let me know how it works out for you. Then the uh, second to last is guacamole. So the avocados, this is the, the recipe from a cook in Mexico that I learned from when I was in Mexico who taught me how to make guacamole this way. Finely chopped red onion, you might not do that. Cilantro, maybe you don't do that either. Um, the, it's lime you use with guacamole, not lemon. If you were stuck and had nothing, you could use lemon, but lime, that flavor, it goes really well with the avocado. And, you, and a lot of people chop in the Roma tomatoes. So you can do that or not do that if you don't want to. It makes a gorgeous guacamole. This is a really good recipe. Um, and then lastly, because I don't want to run out of time. This is the recipe I'm giving you for turmeric. Now, I mentioned some, uh, Marianne said, in your porridge, in your smoothie, deviled eggs, put it in there. Um, anything like that, you even if you were making mac and cheese, say, for, for your young kids, or grandkids, you put a little pinch of turmeric in there, it'll just brighten it up. Like it'll just be like this crap, like not craft dinner, but just your own macaroni and cheese. You put a bit of turmeric in there. It'll just, it'll help. You'll get the flavor. You won't get the flavor necessarily. This recipe, dal is an Indian word and it means like, it's like a pea soup. So you're making it with yellow split peas that anybody can get at the grocery store now pretty much and red lentils, which are actually orange. They're not red. They, they call them red lentils, but they're orange. Don't ask me why I don't, I'm not really sure about that. Um, and then you're using two teaspoons of turmeric in this recipe. This recipe freezes really well. So you can take a cup of it, put it in a little container, put it in your freezer. And then when you want it, you pull it out. This is, Sarita is my mom's name. Now my mom pa passed away a few years ago from cancer, um, way earlier than she should have. She was only 71 years old, which is to me so young. But I, you know, I miss her every single day, but she would be proud that I'm teaching classes on health to all of you. She would be proud that I'm sharing her recipe and very um, happy to be sharing her recipe with you. This is the very first Indian recipe my mom taught me to make. So um, you've got the full explanation on things, how to do, how to, it's about the process on how you do it, not just the ingredients, it's how you do this, that you will make it absolutely delicious. So I'm sharing this with all of you that are here in the class. Um, it's my honor to do that. And so I wanted to just uh, state that. So, um, so let's just have a look here if everybody's doing okay. Now, I just want to make sure, um, I get to the other closing slides because sometimes I run out of time. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask your questions in the last couple minutes here. Um, so this is the summary. Just my screen's just coming back on. There's the summary of what we just did today. 
Um, I want to thank you all for being here. I love when you are here. I love when you fill out the, the feedback form for me as well. That's great. It really gives me um, ideas on how to improve the class. If you love the class, you know, give it a five star. If you think there's some improvement to be made, please give us the, um, the reason so that we can try to improve our classes. Uh, I have um, on this slide. Let's see here. What's next? Um, we, this is just to, to explain to you that you will get some key takeaways from the class, plus you're going to get the, the booklet for the, the recipes. And this is what the um, feedback form looks like. And it always starts at a four star. So you have to either change it to five or, or reduce it from four when you do the feedback form. And spread the word. Uh, we love to have uh, you and your friends come and join us in classes. So spread the word. And if you're interested in hosting a class at any point, um, please let us know because uh, we're here to uh, to honor that. Like if you've got something that you're really, really interested in and you want to share with the rest of us, maybe we can do an interest group or do some form of a, a, of a social hour with that topic. Is anybody um, excited to cook? Try some of the recipes? Yeah? Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you. Great. And thank you for your tip, Marianne. I'm going to bring that to other classes now. Well, thank you um, for all your tips. I yeah. Enjoy. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I, I kind of, I created that other course, Natural Remedies, because people were asking me more about like, what do you do for this? What can you do for that? It doesn't mean go stop your medications. Believe me, you need to talk to your doctor about it. But if you can do natural things like healing, like we now know, we now know healing foods, there are healing foods out there. So why not do some things to uh, heal yourself. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Vanessa. Joanne, thanks for all the likes and loves. I, I really appreciate that. I will see you all again. And I'm just checking. I have another class today at, in half an hour. I'm teaching heart health. So if you're interested in that, I'd love to see you there. I'm gonna stop the recording now and take care everybody. And we'll see you hopefully soon. Thank you, thank have you a good weekend. Much. All right. All, all the best to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Carter. Bye. Bye.